This is the 15th of April of 2020. I just wanted to share my study with you. And it's on James chapter 2, specifically regarding favoritism. I find this subject uh, uh, really interesting. So uh, the title of this study here is favoritism with a question mark and an, asp and an exclamation point. First, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless and upload this video quickly, fast, without any hiccups. I ask you to keep it quiet outside and quiet inside. I ask you to touch every hearer's heart, Father, and write your word on the tablet of their heart. In Jesus' name, Father, anoint my eyes and anoint my speech. In, in Jesus' name. Okay, like I said, the uh, title of this is Favoritism. Specifically, I'll tell you, it's in James, which James, the book of James has so much in it. It's awesome. So, if James, we're going to start with James chapter 2, verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons, which means Christ has no favoritism. Okay, I just, am uh, uh, just awed by the, actually, the just only eight and I know there's more scriptures than that, but eight scriptures I found offhand that speak about favoritism. I'm going to th uh, three. I go through three or four of them here, and then the rest I'm going to just anyhow I'll just put them with a description. Okay, so we're going to look at Second Chronicles, chapter 19, verse seven. Second Chronicles. Chapter 19, verse 7. Second Chronicles 19. 7, 4. Holy Spirit is so good. Wherewith now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respecter of persons, nor taking of gifts. So he once again he's telling us he's no respecter of persons. Um, we're going to also look at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 23. Proverbs twenty-four. Verse 23, Proverbs 24, verse 23. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We're going to also look at Romans chapter 2, verse 11. Romans chapter 2, verse 11. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 2, verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. And then we'll look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 25. Colossians. After Philippians, Colossians, three, verse twenty five. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which is as he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. And I think that's quite a bit right there and quite enough. It tells you that God is no respecter of persons. So in other words, he's not, what he does, I'll tell you, what he does for one person, he's going to do it for the other person. That's why I just love him so much. He's, you know, he doesn't love me because I do this or because I do that. His love is unconditional. What he asks us to do now, he asks us to do. And that's what he expects out of us. 
that love him. So if you love him, you love, like your word says, like Jesus said, you know, you, you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So truly, if you've given over and you totally surrendered to Christ, you're not going to want to break any of the commandments. You'll have only love in your heart. And then if you do, like Psalms uh, 103 and verse 12 says, he's cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. So if you ask for forgiveness, they're gone. And he remembers them no more. And there's many scriptures on that too. I may do a, a study on that one next. I don't, God willing. Okay. Um, until he explains it. So you see in James chapter 1 to 9 you know i want to read this james chapter 2 verses 1 to 9 my brethren have not the faith of our lord jesus christ the lord of glory with respect of persons have no favoritism for if there come unto an assembly unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou therefore, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my brethren, uh, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by, by the which ye are called? If ye are, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convicted of the law as transgressors. And I'll read ten, uh, verse 10 too. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one of these points, is guilty of all. So, um... You know, you can't do that. You just can't be a, you can't, you know, because Jesus never treated anybody with disrespect. Jesus didn't treat women. Go back and do the hermeneutics here as the, the, about the time that he walked the earth. He did not treat women any different than he did men. He did not treat women with disrespect as, as they do now in the Middle East and even here everywhere around the world most places. Uh, he didn't do that. So you go back and research the hermeneutics and you learn who Jesus was and what he taught and how he, how he talked. Hallelujah. And you'll find a great deal of information opens up to you. Praise Father God. And remember to ask for a hedge of protection when you're studying his word. When you, In fact, from the time you get up, since you open your eyes, ask for forgiveness and ask Holy Spirit to put a hedge of protection around you. Ask Father God through um, Jesus Christ to give you revelation knowledge, revelation wisdom, revelation understanding, revelation experience. And even in Proverbs, it says, above all you are learning, get understanding. So we have to think of those things, okay? And also in Isaiah chapter 1, and I will put that down there. In the description chapter 1 I think it's verse uh, 18 it says come let us reason together Check. think of that one um, so you know what another one we're gonna read here is Galatians because God cares not what others um, have and what they don't have. This is what I'm telling you. He's no respecter of persons. We'll read one more here. Galatians 2 6. Actually, nine verses. Galatians 2 6. Galatians chapter 2, verse 6. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no difference to me, 
God accepteth no man's person, for they who seem to be some somewhat in conference added nothing to me. I asked you want to get out of here. God accepteth no man's person. So what he has or what he doesn't have, what he thinks he have, what he, you know, what he actually does have, what he physically, whatever, what other people think he have, it don't matter. Not to God. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for that. Okay. So whoever does wrong will be repaid. And we're going to look at Colossians 3.25 again. Let's look at Colossians 3.25. Colossians 3.25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive... For the wrong which he has done, and there is no respect of persons. I thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so Romans 2, 6. Every person will be judged according to his works. Let's look at Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? See, he doesn't care one way or another. And I said, you show, you know, when you have the love and you totally surrender and you're a vessel for the master, you're going to do what he asks you to do and you're going to actually want his will. You're going to desire his will. See, that's what makes a difference between an unbeliever and a non-believer or somebody that just says that they're a believer. Huh, whoa. So let's look at back to James chapter, uh, which back to James chapter two, verses eight to ten, because that's where we're at right now. We're we're uh, looking at James. We're studying James chapter two at this point. Okay, James chapter two. And we're going to look at verses 8 to 10 again. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if you have respect for per, if you have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convicted of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And we want to look at that. Okay. Um, see, we also see this here. So what I said here is, um, so he's, he's saying that if we break any of these, one, we're guilty of breaking them all. So this is once again, Father God has no respecter of persons. Okay, this is how Father God sees it. it just, uh, and we also see this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Let's look at that. Matthew 5. Nineteen. Matthew 5. Touch my eyes, Father. Matthew 5, chapter... Now, Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Whatsoever, therefore, I'm sorry, whosoever, therefore, shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So why is God telling us um, to treat each other the way he would? You know, with love, of course. Okay, because if you have the love of God in you, you're the fruits, in fact. Your attitude, the way you talk, the way you live, the way you treat others... Ha, yes, the way you treat animals. 
will show that you have the love of God in you. So let's look at uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Galatians 3, 28. And there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for all are, for all are one in Christ Jesus. See, the way that the Muslims treat their women and the imams now say that they can beat and torture their wives and, and make it torture their wives and, and women how they see fit. And now i just seen a post, oh, he gave the okay for uh, the men to eat their wives if they get hungry. You know, God open their eyes. I pray God opens their eyes. I pray God opens everyone's eyes and all the ones that are blinded and all the ones that have not accepted him to who he is in Jesus name. Okay. In truth, in Luke 10, 27, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Let's look at that one. Okay. Luke 10, 27. Luke chapter 10. In verse 27, uh, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. See how important that is? If you have the love of God in you, your fruits will show it. The way you talk, all those things I've just said, the fruits will show. Okay, note, this is another reason why we're to pray for our leaders, people in uh, authority. And the more that you pray, the more that you speak in tongues, the more that uh, uh, you help others, you know, the more you'll be honored by God. Because this is what he wants. This is what he wants. In the name of Jesus Christ, the more Holy Spirit will teach you. Hallelujah. So, in verses 14 to 16... We see along as the faith, how you put it into works and what needs to be done. So let's look at that. Ch uh, James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. What does it profit? My brother, excuse me, though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, uh, ye then give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Good question, isn't it? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you the, my faith with, by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils are see also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered sacrifice, when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Hmm. Seest thou now faith with his with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. Hallelujah. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And uh, he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Interesting concept, huh? 
So he did. He walked out his faith. In other words, he walked out his faith. That's what we need to be doing, walking out our faith. Example, I give because I know God uh, will provide. So my faith through me, the faith that I have, I can help other people and I'll give to other people because God will keep supplying me. It's just like with studying and being te teaching the word. Well, you teach the word and God, I mean, is it God, Holy Spirit will teach you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love Holy Spirit. Love Father God. Love Jesus. Okay. Excellent example is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it shall be given you. Let's look at that. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6. Verse 38, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured unto you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the word of God. Okay, so and we want to remember this. We want to remember it and keep going strong. And thank you for listening to me. Now I'm going to say this prayer and I ask you just to say amen if you agree. If you don't agree, that's your prerogative. <laughs> If you agree to say amen because there's no time date, there's no time, distance, space between you and God. So he knows and he'll meet you where you're at. That's how I can say, that's how I can say, you know, where I go, the kingdom goes because he lives inside of me. That's why I said there's no time, distance, or space because he lives in me. But when you're saying a prayer to Father God through Jesus Christ and through Holy Spirit, there is nothing between you and him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father Yahweh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me of known and unknown sins. I ask you to show me any dark spots in me so I can repent of them. Father, forgive me for not forgiving myself. Father, I ask you to help me forgive myself and others that have hurt me. Father, of my own free will, I choose to forgive anyone that has caused me pain or injured me. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over these sins. Father, wash away my sins, the sins of others that have wounded me, and the sins of my ancestors. Hallelujah. Father, I ask in Jesus' name you to apply your dunamis power, the power that raised Christ from the dead, to my soul wounds. Hallelujah. Now I know that my sins are forgiven and my soul wounds are healed. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your faithfulness, your mercy, your tenderness, your grace, and your perfect, perfect salvation you've given us through Christ Jesus. Now, I'll give you the, uh, the scriptures that um, back up my, my prayer. Leviticus chapter 17, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 14, uh, 3 John verse 2, Psalms 103, 12. Hallelujah. Father, upload this video fast without any hiccups. That's my prayer. And then it will go around the world touching who, it wants to, who you want it to touch. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless everyone within the sound of my voice that's hearing me. In Jesus' name, amen.